Hello friends, it's so nice to see you. I'm Miss Hannah. You probably know me already from either the Sketchbook Tuesday videos that we had over the summer, or I usually teach Young at Art at the Dubuque Museum of Art. We're not having any in-person classes this fall, so we're going to try something new. I'm going to record classes for um, you guys to watch on the Art Museum's YouTube page. So here we go. So what I really wanted to focus this fall on books. You might know how much I love books. And the books I wanted to share with you guys are Caldecott, Caldecott Award winners. Okay, so they're books with these shiny golden stickers on them. And Caldecott Award winners are picked every year. And they're a picture book that has really, really wonderful storytelling and art combined. So I'm gonna pull out some of my favorites. Um, we're probably gonna keep exploring these guys all the way through this fall and winter. So here we go. All right, so the one I picked to start with is called Oxcart Man, and it's by Donald Hall. And the illustrations, the pictures, are by an artist named Barbara Cooney. And I just love, I love her paintings. And I also really love this one because it talks about the seasons and it talks about fall and it talks about life on the farm back when people pretty much all lived on farms and they got their livelihood, they got their food and they got some of their clothing and they got a lot of their supplies from what they could make and grow on their farm, which is really neat. And I think that's something we celebrate in the fall. It's kind of the bounty of things that could be grown in the earth or that we can make for ourselves if we all have our own little farms. So let's get started. Ox cart man. Let's see if I can set this up, there you go. In October, he backed his ox into his cart and he and his family filled it up with everything they made or grew all year long that was left over. He packed a bag of wool he sheared from the sheep in April. He packed a shawl his wife wove on a loom from yarn spun at the spinning wheel from sheep sheared in April. He packed five pairs of mittens his daughter knit from yarn spun at the spinning wheel from sheep sheared in April. To see him with it, oh, I got glare going on here with his bag of wool from his sheep. He packed candles the family made. He packed linen made from flax they grew. He packed shingles he split himself. He packed birch brooms his son carved with a borrowed kitchen knife. He made their own brooms. He packed potatoes they dug from their garden. But first he counted out potatoes enough to eat all winter and potatoes for seed next spring. Do you know that you replant potatoes to get new potato plants? I tried that this spring and it worked. It was really cool. He packed a barrel of apples, honey and honeycombs, turnips and cabbages, a wooden box of maple sugar from the maples they tapped in March when they boiled and boiled and boiled the sap away. He packed a bag of goose feathers that his children collected from the barnyard geese. When his cart was full, he waved goodbye to his wife, his daughter, and his son. And he walked at his ox's head for 10 days over hills, through valleys, by streams, past farms and villages. I'm gonna hold this up. Do you see where he leaves his farm? And he walks on this long, long road. Oh, we're still getting glare. All the way across the hills and into towns.
until he came to Portsmouth and Portsmouth Market. So he goes from his farm in the hills all the way out to the ocean, to a port out on the East Coast. And there, finally, we're in the city, right? Do you see all the big buildings? So the people in the cities, they can't grow their own food necessarily or raise their own sheep for wool. So that's why he brings all his extra supplies and food that he grew here to sell it. He sold the bag of wool. He sold the shawl his wife made. He sold five pairs of mittens. He sold candles and shingles. He sold birch brooms. He sold potatoes. He sold apples. He sold honey and honeycombs, turnip and cabbages. He sold maple sugar. He sold a bag of goose feathers. Do you see them here at the market? Have you guys ever gone down to the farmer's market in downtown Dubuque? It looks a lot like this still, doesn't it? When you get to go and buy things, buy produce from the farmers that grew them and made them. It's really cool. But listen to this. Then he sold, oh, can you see? Then he sold the wooden box. He carried the maple sugar in. Then he sold the barrel. He carried the apples in. Then he sold the bag. He carried the potatoes in. Then he sold his ox cart. He sold his ox cart now that it's empty. He doesn't need it anymore. He can make another one, right? Then he sold his ox and kissed him goodbye on the nose. So he raised this ox from a little tiny baby ox and he raised it partially to sell it when he was done with his farming for the year. And next year, maybe he'll have a new baby ox to raise. But did he love his ox? He kissed it goodbye on the nose, right? Hope it has a good long life helping another person out, right? Then he sold his ox's yoke and harness. With his pockets full of coins, he walked through Portsmouth Market. He bought an iron kettle to hang over the fire at home. And for his daughter, he bought an embroidery needle that came from a boat in the harbor that had sailed all the way from England. And for his son, he bought a barlow knife for carving birch brooms with. And for the whole family, he bought two pounds of wintergreen peppermint candies. So now that he sold all his goods, he gets to take the money that he earned and he gets to buy some things that he can't make on his farm, right? Then he walked home with the needle and the knife and the wintergreen peppermint candies tucked into the kettle. And a stick over his shoulder stuck through the kettle's handle and coins still in his pockets. So now he has to go back again. Can you see this? He's leaving the town and walking back out, Oop, back out into the countryside. And look, the landscape has changed. It's later in the fall now. And now it's not bright red and golden with all the leaves. Now it's starting to get brown and quiet for the winter time, isn't it? Past farms and villages, over hills, through valleys, by streams. Until he came to his farm and his son, his daughter, and his wife were waiting for him. Look at this beautiful sunset. You guys get to see some really beautiful sunsets now that autumn is coming and the sun is setting earlier. I love this time of year. And his daughter took her needle and began stitching. And his son took his barlow knife and started whittling. And they cooked dinner in their new kettle. And afterward, everyone ate a wintergreen peppermint candy. And that night, the ox cart man sat in front of his fire, stitching a new harness for the young ox in his barn. So there they are all sitting around their fire. And they're all busy, aren't they? They're already working again. And making new things. And he carved a new yoke and sod planks for a new cart. 
and split shingles all winter. Can you see it's all snowy outside there? Ooh, can you see that? And he's working in the barn and like you can even see his new young ox. While his wife made flax into linen all winter, and his daughter embroidered linen all winter, and his son carved Indian brooms from birch all winter, and everybody made candles. There she is spinning, and her daughter is sewing. And in March, they tapped the sugar maple trees and boiled the sap down. Look at that, Look at that beautiful winter landscape. And in April, they sheared the sheep, spun yarn, and wove and knitted. Look, do you see how they're taking the sheep's wool coat off of it? It doesn't hurt the sheep. So they get to, it's like getting a haircut, right? They get to take all that fluffy wool off the sheep. And then they can make sweaters out of it. And in May, they planted potatoes, turnips, and cabbages, while apple blossom bloom, blossoms bloomed and fell, while bees woke up, starting to make new honey. Now their farm, oh, can you see? Now their farm is starting its spring life again, isn't it? Look at that, so beautiful. And geese squawked in the barnyard, dropping feathers as soft as clouds. There they are. All right. So that's Oxcart Man. I know you can check it out from the library if you want to um, take a look or read it again. Look at the pictures in more detail. I know it's a little bit tricky <laughs> with this camera set up. Um, for an activity for you guys to do now that we've read this story about um, the farm and the landscape and the the working of the land to um, to make things to live with and to eat and to support ourselves, um, I wanted to kind of explore that idea of landscapes. And for this, because you are at home and I am here in my art studio, I just tried to gather supplies that hopefully you already have access to. So if you guys want to use crayons, you can use crayons for this. Some of you might have something called an oil pastel. I'll warn you though, these are pretty messy. So if you want to play with these, make sure you put down maybe some newspaper and maybe you want to wear like a smock or an old t-shirt or something. Um, put that on before you play with these because these get pretty goopy, okay? All right, this is a, Kind of a fancier set but this works just as well as those Crayola sets and those Crayola sets work just as well as these. So watercolors, you could use watercolors if you feel like painting. And I, I do a lot of my own art with colored pencils. So if you have colored pencils you should use those. If you have other kinds of paint go ahead and give those a try. Totally open-ended, right? So thinking about landscapes and when we were looking in the book, um, I want you to notice the colors, right? Do you see this autumnal landscape here? Let me see if I can get the tilt right. Yeah, do you see it's all these bright reds, but also these soft, soft greens. And then the hills in the background are these really quiet blues, right? So it's kind of a quiet landscape, but it's also kind of exciting because it's got the beautiful fall colors, right? And then when we get to the city, I actually think with the bright yellow road and the red and the big white buildings, I think that's like kind of more exciting. Like those colors, they like energy. There's a lot of things going on here. There's a lot of bustling, right? And even with the, with the folks shopping at the market, do you see how colorful, how colorful their, their outfits are? And that's another way to say lots of energy happening here in this scene. And then, let's see if I can find it. Do you remember on his way back how quiet the landscape looks? 
in the later fall and the trees are bare. You see that? As he's walking alone now. And I'm going to show you this one because this is, I think, my favorite one in the whole book. I just love, I really do love this one with the glare. I love the colors, the contrast between this cold, misty, kind of twilighty sort of landscape and that gorgeous fall sunset going on above in the sky. All right, so I gathered a couple examples of some landscapes that my kids had done and that I've done in the past, um, just to give you ideas. Again, totally open-ended for you to explore. This was something my daughter drew actually for school for social studies because they were studying famous artists. I don't know if you can see this well. It's not as much contrast. But she did a landscape and it's a spring landscape. So it's got this pink and these really kind of light pastel colors. But I love how she did the shadows as well. Notice her shadows are kind of these cooler colors like the blue and the purple. But there's even a little patch of bright green right there. And I really liked how that turned out. So this is a landscape. What does this landscape say to you? Is it kind of fun and spring-like and there's a lot of like potential? Potential energy there for growth. And here's another one that she did, which I just thought was really fun. She actually made a pasture of sheep. And if you want to do something like this, you could use finger paints, right? And so you can dip your thumb into either watercolor paints or if you have something called tempera paints, which is like just the Crayola paint pots and that kind of thing. Those are washable paints, right? You could dip your thumb into those and you could make sheep with your thumb. And she gave them little, little brown heads and tails. And she, can you see this? Can you see there's a little bit of those, that circular texture in her sheep pasture? She actually made that by painting the temper paint onto one of those bubble wrap, like packaging for shipping things, right? The little bubble, um, packaging stuff. <laughs> I don't know the word for it. She painted that and then pressed that on here to give this fun texture to her grass. But you could do something like this also with like Q-tips, cotton balls, um, cut up sponges, you know, anything that you want to explore. So this is a really fun idea for a little farm scene landscape. So that's that one. And then we were talking about those oil pastels. Here's one that she did quite a while ago. And she just did some trees with a swing. The swing, the swing, it's like somebody just jumped off the swing. They just went wee and jumped off the swing. And the swing is swinging back and forth wildly now that they're gone. A little birdhouse, a little bird down here. So there's the landscape. You think this is summertime, a summertime landscape? I don't think she got to finish this one but I really like, I like how she put that together. All right. And then this is something, this is actually a professional artist's um, print that they made, but I just thought this was really sweet and simple. He makes these woodblock prints. And so this is a print. So he carved something and then inked it. And then he was able to basically like stamp a bunch of these cards, right? But I love how he's got the red sun and these are geese or ducks, some animal near some bird is flying south maybe for the winter above this marsh. And I love how simple that is, but I think it's really kind of evocative of this quiet landscape where the birds are leaving, going, going somewhere warmer. All right, and this is the last one I wanted to show you. You may have seen this one before. Um, this is actually something called a collage, okay? Because I used a couple different things to make this. I cut out shapes and paper and I glued those on. So that's how I made the houses and the clouds and the sun. And yeah, that was fun to explore. But I also painted like my landscape. Again, with those tempera paints, but you could use watercolors as well. And I like this because it's celebrating fall. You see how the tree has got its leaves are are all orange celebrating fall but it's also just so colorful with a lot of really warm colors 
So this yellow and this red, the purple, the bright red, brown trunk, those are all warm colors, right? They make you feel warm, nice and warm. All right, so I really like this idea for a landscape. So you can explore this sort of idea too, to have your cozy homes in your beautiful fall foliage. And the very last one I wanted to show you was colored pencils. And this is one that I started a, a while ago and never finished. But this is colored pencils. And I like how you can blend the colored pencils and make these really colorful um, backgrounds to this. I don't know if you can tell with the camera from my computer, but it's actually like kind of a, there's some yellows and some oranges even up here in the sunset to make the sky kind of this warm glow. And then the shadows of this field here, like this must be snow, it's snow covered, right? And it's got these purples and these blues. So this is a winter landscape, obviously, because the tree doesn't have any leaves on it. So yeah, there's another idea for you. All right, I could keep talking and sh sharing for a long time, but I'm gonna go ahead and sign off now. Have fun exploring. Um, enjoy reading if you can get your hands on that book um, by yourselves or um, just keep looking for inspiration and in other books that you come across. There's always so much art and ideas to explore. So um, I will do this once a month and this will go live on the second Tuesdays of each month, just like we used to have young at art class. So I will see you in November. Till then, have fun and take care, okay?